welcome to the CIO Water Cooler TV. Uh, this is the series that aims to capture some of the conversations that peers might have huddled around a water cooler that might otherwise get lost. Uh, and today we are joined by Ruth. Thank you for your time. Okay. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar with myself, my name's David. I am the host of a podcast called Tech Talks, but also now the host of CIO Water Cooler TV. And very happy to be having a conversation with you about change, change within organizations and IT strategy. Um, if you don't mind me asking, kind of, how long have you been in the industry generally? Um, about 30 years in one way, shape or form, looking at, uh, looking at change through organisations. And now yeah. you sit as a, yeah. a non-exec uh, yeah. at SMS. I the... sit as a non-exec at SMS and um, do independent consulting these days to, mm. to other companies who have challenges that I can help with. Now, it's an interesting time to be putting a, a, an IT or a technology strategy in place, given the rate of change and how organisations, I suppose, are, are having to adopt transformation almost as business as usual, which sounds somewhat vague. So I, I suppose the principles of actually what that means would be quite interesting to get stuck into. Yeah, I think, I mean, a, a question that I've been asked a number of times in a number of different contexts, actually, is, well, what is an IT strategy? And um, I think that's, it's... It's both easy and difficult. Um, a lot of people think they know, a lot of people think they know, and their answer will all differ from each other. For me, it's got two kind of two dimensions. Um, one is doing the, right, doing the right thing and doing things right. Mm -hmm. And the second is fit for today and fit for the future. And it's kind of both on those dimensions, those are the things that you're actually trying to work out. What do you have to be able to do today? What does that look like? Are you doing it in the right way? And are you doing the right things? And what do you need to do today in order to do the right things for the future? And just make sure that you've, got, you've actually got a balance between those. And I don't think it's actually any, any easier or any more complex than that. And there's lots of strands you can pull into that around mm. your procurement and your supplier strategy and what you're doing with your people. And there's lots and lots and lots of different strands to it. But they all, for me, fundamentally boil down to doing the right thing and doing it right. But I suppose the what you're doing now for today and what you're doing for the future, I mean, that's, that's subtly shifted, right? Because... Mm. I don't know, even five years ago, you'd be looking at the internal capability of a technology department to support the business, whereas now the, the, the majority of technology businesses, I would suggest, are product-driven and having to look to their customers to, to inform where they go as a business. Is, is that right? I'd say yes and no. I think it depends on your definition of a technology business right. and the technology department. Um, Working for uh, companies whose products are not technology, I've never worked for a technology company. So I've never worked for a, um, I don't know, a Honeywell or, or what have you, whose products actually are related to technology. I've always worked for organizations whose end product has actually been about the customer or the consumer in some way. Mm. And actually technology has been a service to that business, has internal customers, but um, even in, in the language of Agile, when you talk about products, I've always struggled with that to a certain extent. Okay. When I worked for Royal Mail, our product was the special delivery product. Our product was not um, the tracking solution that supported the special delivery product. That wasn't the product that Royal Mail, which was the entity, actually sold. So in technology, when you started then talking about, you start then talking about products, um, in a... In a non-technology company you're, you're abstracting that context mm. and I think it's actually quite confusing sometimes that language within an organization um, because you know people were very clear what a product owner meant the product owner was the owner of the special delivery product well what's the product owner in technology who's of a technology product which isn't a product that you're going to sell to the market as it stands what's the prism through which you view yourself and your role as a technology leader do you view yourself as a a tech leader or as a business leader who happens to work in tech? As a business leader who happens to work in tech. I think it's about the, in the companies that I've, I've been in and I engage in and, and where I want to sit in the world, um, fundamentally the company provides a service and an offering. Often that service and offering is, is underpinned by technology. Technology is an essential part of it. You can innovate the technology in order to innovate the service offering to the customer. But I suppose if you say, where does the revenue come from? The revenue comes from buying the end product. Mm. People are not buying the technology. In Apple, they buy the product, they buy the technology because that's what it is. But if you are, um, I don't know, you're Tesco or you're, um, you work in retail, I spent a lot of my career in retail, your, your customers and your consumers are not buying 
the technology. They're buying the output of it. They're buying the way that that facilitates their experience. But fundamentally, if they want to buy a, a bottle of shampoo, they want to buy a bottle of shampoo. Now, Procter & Gamble have got technology that supports the production of that shampoo. Tesco have got technology that supports the sale of that shampoo. It might go online. You might have other parties involved. But fundamentally, the product that is sold is the shampoo and the, um, the technology is an enabler to that. So I see myself as very much saying, well, how does what we're doing in the technology stack up to the business strategy and what we're actually trying to do as a business? So when you've defined that strategy, I would assume that the board signs off on yeah. that strategy. Yeah, typically. Do, you, do you think the board typically, uh, and this is very generally speaking, but do you think boards in enterprise businesses understand technology as well as they could? And does that strengthen or weaken the hand of the tech leader? I think it is the job of the, of the tech leader to communicate the technology in such a way that the typically highly intelligent, interested and curious members of the board who may not have a technology background actually can understand and relate to it. Mm. I think that's really important. And I think that is the role of the tech leader. Um, they, have a, kind of, they face down into the technology organization and around them into the technology world. And they also face into the board and the, and the commercial. And for me, it's not, it's not good enough. You can't get away with, trust me, I know what I'm doing. That's, it's not professional, in fact. Um, equally, I think you know, the board, generally speaking these days, do take an interest. The technology leader needs to translate it. It's the responsibility of the person who actually has the knowledge Mm. to translate it into the language of the of the recipient it's not the responsibility of the recipient to make sure that you know they go on training courses to learn to understand the technologist that's my view so as someone who's done this previously mm. if, if someone was out there watching this video and they are putting a strategy together mm. what are the two or three things that you would tell them to avoid tell them to avoid um i would tell them to uh, I probably tell them to avoid approaching it from a negative basis. In okay. fact, um, so I, th I actually think that's I think it's an important, uh, really important. I would say go out and understand the business strategy and make sure you really understand what the business is trying to do. Mm -hmm. Through that lens, look at what technology and your understanding of the technology world may tell you that the business might not have thought of because it is a two-way, two-way street. Sure. And then make sure that you can trace the connection between what the business is trying to do and the main aim of the business and what you're actually then proposing so that that is overt. Um, so some of it will actually be this, you know, the business wants to launch internationally, therefore I need to, you know, mm. in my systems, I need to make them take multiple currency or whatever, it's pretty old, old hat these days. Um, but it might also be to be able to go out there and say, you know, are you aware that contactless exists and that what we could do with it? So it does work both ways, but you should be able to trace it. And if contactless to sit with a pretty meaningless example but if contactless has no relevance to the business strategy drop it because yeah. it's got no relevance to your tech strategy either it's just a buzzword then look thank you very much for your time and spending a little bit of time to talk welcome. to our audience uh if you enjoy today's content don't forget to subscribe there's plenty more and of course continue the conversation online please do comment on this video